along that uh, business corridor is if they, a lot of the buildings are characterized by being built up to the sidewalk, one, maybe two stories, uh, very neighborhood, pedestrian friendly type of, of, of drive. Um, what this will do is if a business wants to change its use or a new business wants to come in and they would be subject to the current parking codes, they would have to severely alter or maybe even tear down all the existing building and build a new project in order to provide more parking because the parking codes are more strict now. What this will do is after a survey that was done it showed that there is an underutilization of parking spaces along this area that based on the the short shortage of the underutilization of the parking spaces uh, a business okay. in lieu of providing the on street on site parking they could apply to have that required parking credited and there's a pool of about a hundred spaces altogether for, uh, for that can be used as credits in lieu of having the on-site spaces so you found a way to make it business friendly you don't have to destroy or remove historic structures we're taking advantage of vacant overflow parking by creating a credit program that allows future business to invest. Couldn't have said it better myself. Good job, Tom. Okay. Thank you very much. Right. So we can uh, move that item, sir? Fantastic. And congratulations to District 13 and to the staff and all the folks involved in this process. These are uh, good examples and models that should be duplicated throughout the city. Congratulations. Great job. C Councilman, on this item, you may wish to instruct the city attorney to prepare the ordinance. Roberto, thank you so much. Right on cue. Mm -hmm. So we will request the city attorney to prepare the ordinance, uh, knowing that District 13 supports this. And that would be the direction based on the vote of this committee. Thank you very much. And so let's go to our director. We can give us our report, and we'll go to the final item. Good afternoon, council members. Um, I'd like to first of all thank both of you for your leadership on approving the comprehensive bike plan element of the City of Los Angeles last week at the joint committee between the Plum Committee and the Transportation Committee. Um, we're very excited to see that plan move forward. We think it really um, offers more mobility choices for the citizens of Los Angeles and dedicates funding um, for additional bike lanes and infrastructure that goes a long way in moving our city um, in a fashion that's a lot greener and a lot healthier in terms of city building. Um, in addition, this week um, you may notice there's a lot of boxes being removed around the planning department. We have approximately 120 planners that are all taking their new seats that we're moving around as part of our reorganization of the department. So over this weekend we'll be moving all the computer infrastructure and assigning new phone numbers and we'll make sure that we provide to the council offices as well as the general public all the new phone numbers and assignments of all the staff that's moving as part of our blueprint to try and make the city more efficient and effective and to do more with less and having the project planners handle one application per planner um, in a streamlined fashion where you have one point of contact within the department for every application rather than going through many different people's hands. We feel it will be a lot more efficient as well as effective. So that's taking place this week, so bear with us as um, we have the staff cleaning out their old offices and moving floor locations. We're also moving a number of staff to the Figueroa Towers on Figueroa Street to our one-stop center to um, bolster our development services area so that they can take in all the applications, the department processes in one place, as well as clear all those applications in one place rather than have applicants go back and forth to City Hall. So um, do you dare put in writing which team which individual belongs to which team in which geographic area? You, you, yes. You're going to be able to lay that out? Correct. We have 10 geographic teams and we'll have all the assignments have already been made but we'll make those um, available on our webpage as well as the council office's planning deputy so they know, for example, in your neighborhood or your council office um, who your planners assigned to your area are. They're also going to have expertise in advanced planning but the applications for that area will also be assigned geographically so the staff can build that expertise and have Hello. a very good relationship with the community. So there are 10 teams? Correct, 10 teams. Okay, great. Um, and having said that, that concludes my report. Great job. Um, Councilman, any questions for our director? Uh, so I look forward to the meeting tomorrow and uh, I look forward to uh, meeting with the planning department tomorrow. That would be great. Thank you. We appreciate you coming. And um, I just want to send a message to the staff saying hang in there. I know we're in uncharted waters here, but I, I believe in their stewardship and their sense of uh, commitment to the city, and I want to thank them for their hard work. Thank you. Thank you, sir.
Okay. Um, Roberto, where does that take us? Uh, that would be item five, council members. It's an appeal by Mr. Jim McQuiston. He's appealing the action of the central APC, which approved two variances to permit the continued use and maintenance of an adult entertainment business in CD4. Okay, I have a report from the staff. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, Lynn Wyatt with the Office of Zoning Administration. Yes, what you have before you is an appeal to a determination by the Central Area Planning Commission a denying a prior appeal and approving a variance to permit the continued use and maintenance of an adult entertainment business in the MR1 zone and a variance to permit the continued use and maintenance of this business within 500 feet of a R-zoned property. Mr. McQuiston, the appellant, has stated objections to the variance approval referencing constitutional law in regards to equal protection and due process, the inability to make the requisite affirmative findings, violations of the conditions of the prior grant, damage to his property, and nuisances in association with the operation of this facility. Mr. McQuiston voiced these appeals at both my hearing, are both the, these issues at both my hearing as well as at the appeal hearing before the Area Planning Commission. To give you some background, the operator of this business has maintained the business at this location since 1994 under two prior variances issued by the planning department. The most current grant that was issued in 1999 turned out in 2009 and is now before us. Uh, the variance is necessitated in association with the use due to the proximity of the residential zone parcel within a 500 foot radius of the subject site and the use within the MR1 zone, which is not allowed by right. I have provided exhibits to the staff, which I'll have him pass around to you. These exhibits show the location of the applicant's property as well as the our zoned property north of the property within the 500 foot radius as well as the appellant's property. The property that's zoned R uh, for residential use is 485 feet from the actual site and therefore um, just within the 500 foot radius. That property has been maintained for parking uses for over 15 years in association with the commercial use on the site, which has been used as a pharmacy again uh, for a number of years, at least 15 years. And so the potential for that property ultimately to be ever developed as uh, residential use is um, almost zilch um, unless they choose to at some point uh, decide to uh, turn most of that property into an alternative type of use. The adjoining property to the west is within the West Hollywood area. It's similarly zoned for both commercial uses. Uh, the applicant, uh, the entrance to the club, just to give you some background, is on Sycamore Avenue. The applicant maintains health and safety practices with specific rules and regulations in regards to the conduct of patrons and employees on the site. Parking is maintained on the site. The use of the facility is primarily in the evening. There are four to 14 employees on site. Signage is unobtrusive. You would not know that this was a particular type of use at all, given uh, the, there's just uh, directional signs within the parking lot and one uh, awning sign. Uh, patrons pass through a lobby where staff members explain the rules of the club. No person is admitted to the facility without complete and clear knowledge of the nature of the enterprise and the rules. And there is no change to the footprint or the actual structural uh, building uh, proposed as part of the variance. This is a unique location in regards to its location and proximity both to Santa Monica Boulevard as well as with industrial zone properties. These properties, many of them have uses that are not true industrial use but are associated with production studios, sound studios and similar as well as book depositories, uh, photography uh, and that similar types of uses. Most of these uses operate during the daytime whereas this particular, the applicant's use operates essentially at night from between 7 uh, p.m. in the evening until approximately 2 o'clock in the morning are its average hours of uses. Therefore, they don't impact the adjacent uses nor uh, the uh, sort of ambiance of the neighborhood itself. 
In my hearing, we had the Los Angeles Police Department present. The Los Angeles Police Department provided uh, input. They had done an inspection on the site just the night before my hearing. At that time, they acknowledged a few issues that they had in regards to the upkeep of the uh, internal parts of the site and, and some cleanliness, but ultimately they had no objections to the continued maintenance of the operation on the site, and they filed no formal objections to continued use of the site for the adult entertainment facility. Uh, Excuse me. Uh, when the police officers gave their presentation, was there any connectivity to any crime or types of crime or levels of crime that could be associated with this establishment that might have or could have been alleged to be impacted by? None whatsoever. They didn't bring up any criminal or those types of nuisance uh, issues whatsoever in regards to the operation. What they identified were the emptying of trash cans that were still with inside the interior, some signage issues in regards to occupancy, as well as they wanted to ascertain that there was definitely no uh, residential property within the 500-foot radius. So there's no evidence uh, directly linking the establishment with any kind of crime? None whatsoever. Here. The appellant okay. will provide some information to you, but there is no substantial evidence nor anything in the record to establish that there has been any direct linkage between what they are presenting and the operation itself. Okay. Please continue. Uh, just in conclusion, I'd like to say that the claims by the appellant regarding potential impacts and damages are unsubstantiated and not evidenced in the record. It clearly would be an unnecessary hardship to now ask the applicant to relocate after 15 years and two prior variances issued through the department and the uh, city. Uh, the variance is conditioned to require that the applicant maintain security at the site, commensurate with patron attendance, fully monitor and discourage loitering or lingering within the parking area, and avoid spillover effects. And as such, the appeal should be denied. Okay. And to be absolutely clear, the observations from the LAPD goes back 15 years? Yes. The, the LAPD has opined on each one of the variances that have been brought forward to the department, and in each instance, as they uh, established certain conditions that they felt were relevant and appropriate to the operation, they did not establish any objections to the operation. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any thank questions, Councilmember? Okay. Thank you. So we'll go to the uh, applicant, uh, and I believe it's, uh, not applicant, I'm sorry, the person who is, reasons for their appeal. We're going to Mr. McQuiston. Who is the appellant? That's the word. <laughs> I was wondering about that. I was wondering how to, Mr. McQuiston. Jim McQuiston. This is something that I have to bring with a heavy heart. I must say this. I'm sorry, one more time? I bring this appeal with a heavy heart. I really do. As you know, uh, it was a shock to me. Uh, Philip and I, a case was a very, very big shock to me after being 30 years in this kind of thing where we horse traded to find out it was against, not only against the law, it was unconstitutional. And it was very clear in the Anaya decision, there were two points made. One was stop what you're doing on that particular project. And number two point was the city must comply on other projects. And just to be very clear, Mr. Question, you made reference to a decision. Can you name that decision one more time? Uh, this room has such an echo, I couldn't understand you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Not a reference to a decision. Uh, you made reference to a case. What case is that? Philip Anaya versus the city of Los Angeles. Philip Anaya. Yes. Okay. And as you know, I've given that to you many, many times. It's the, uh, in the appeal, I have an 11 page really legal argument, and I'm not going to go through the entire legal argument there. I assume that everyone has read that. And uh, it's on the council file, so, I mean, in the clerk's file. So one thing I did want to say is this. Okay, uh, the Philip and I case referenced the Topanga Association case, which you also have had. 
and you've all been given these, so I know you have them. And it's pretty, pretty clear that we have to be very careful when we put up our zones and we are not supposed to make exceptions to the zones. And it means that we really need good planning to start with so we have a good zone. Now, I put in, in this one page here, I put in six points, which I think you have on the single page. And it says that, first of all, we have a problem with what we're calling a private club. We have these passes put out. For $2, anybody can get in. That's the cheapest nightclub I've ever heard of, okay? So it's not a private club to start with. And we have these, which also have the name of the club on them. And this, both of these are liberally distributed on my property a block away, all right? So it's really a blight on the neighborhood. But Topanga says that that is immaterial. What is important is if the zone says you're supposed to be using it for a certain use, you're not allowed to use it for another use unless everyone gets what's known as inverse condemnation, just rewards. And that amounts to over $6 billion for the city. Now, we can't afford that. What we want to do is this. I have fought in the past for these kinds of organizations to be allowed in the city, and they are in commercial zones. And we have them in commercial zones. That's where they belong. And the reason that we put this extremely, extremely restrictive, we lost 87% of our rights over a restricted manufacturing zone. 87% was because we were losing the Hollywood industry. Now, uh, Lynn just said in an offhand way that these industries are not industries. They are, they are our lifeblood these production facilities. I have one, I, they have them across the street, they're all over. They used to be in these buildings. And this could be developed again to be even bigger production facility. So uh, the Topanga rules say that you cannot use it for other use. It's not a, a uh, permitted use. Now, the city might be able to rezone the entire area if they don't want Hollywood anymore in Hollywood. And that would be perfectly okay as long as they treat everyone equally. But you cannot discriminate. And this case is one of the highest discrimination areas in the city. The MR1 is not just limited manufacturing. It is really restricted. And we can't, we can't serve anybody anything. We can't have any kind of commercial. We can't have a bake sale. We can't have any kind of thing which the public can come into like this right here. You can't have something like this. Now, I would love to have them in the city. We need these people. We have one in our area which is right next to residential property. So it's not a question of the 500 feet. The question is, do we want Hollywood in Hollywood? And I say we want Hollywood in Hollywood. We have to preserve this area. This is a landlocked area. It's not an, an exposed area. And that is the kind of area that these production facilities want. And that is what they're clamoring for. So that's why I've brought this appeal. We have the six points here. I'm not going to go through them because you can read this right. yourself. And unfortunately, uh, as I say, I'm, uh, it's, it's been common practice with the city council before the new charter to do this kind of work. But now it's only the planning department's work. 
and the city council has just got to stop. If you want to change what the use is, change the zone. That's perfectly okay, but not piece by piece. That's what Topanga has said. Thank you, Mr. McQuiston. Thank you, sir. Uh, just for the record, Madam Attorney, we have several assertions being made, and can either the planning staff or city attorney respond to some of the assertions being made by the appellant? Specifically in regards to industrial use or industrial properties, um, I think Mr. McQuiston does bring up a good uh, reason, and the department has been involved over time in trying to encourage maintenance of industrial properties throughout the area. But for this particular use, and based on the variance findings, again, we can make all five findings, and specifically as in regards to unique location. And when you look at this particular industrial area, when I made the remark that it's not true industrial, my, I should clarify that I meant as far as manufacturing or, quote, the, the the more um, intense type of industrial uses. This is a clean industrial use area. Again, it's production studios, all of that. The applicants, uh, the zone, and, and this, this particular business fit in with that, are consistent with that. When you look at some of the other variances and other non-conforming uses in the area, you have a plant nursery. You have a photography store. You have a book depository, none of which necessarily qualify as being industrial, but at the same time are appropriate to the area and ultimately are consistent with the pattern of land use in that area. So as much as Mr. McQuiston does make some valid statements in regards to the immediate variance, I think we can still make those five findings without any difficulty. So the level of impact by this use, given the variance it applied for and all the findings that have been established, it's your professional judgment by allowing this use does not take away from the uh, proposed use as dictated by the zone. No, and, and if you look at them in response uh, to potential impacts, we had other, uh, we had letters in the case file from other property owners and businesses in the area in support of the applicant's request and continued use of the site for this use. And so there were no objections to that. And we showed no evidence of spillover effects nor impacts regarding to parking. And again, the evidence that provided Mr. McQuiston provided in regards to any sort of nuisance not, are not necessarily related to this site. And there's no evidence to directly correlate them to that. So the reference to the Topanga case and the Philanaya versus the City of LA, in I your judgment, is not. The city attorney I just, on that I just, one. I just, for the record, I just want to make sure we're responding to those. Terry things. Kaufman, Messia City Attorney's Office. I, I, I find this the ZA's decision supportable. I, I don't mm -hmm. think the analysis is uh, Mr. McQuiston's analysis is correct. Okay. So. Okay. I just want to, for the record, make sure we understand what's being advised and, and how this committee should respond to this. So thank you. Any questions from the, my colleague on this? Okay. Um, let's move on with the other speakers then. We would like to have uh, Elizabeth Peterson. You have to come on up, give us your name and address, and then we'll be followed and closed by Renee Weitzer, who will be the deputy of the area. Uh, Hi. Council members, Elizabeth Peterson, 1850 Industrial Street, Unit 606, Los Angeles, California. Um, I'm in an unusual situation. I am speaking for the applicant, but not necessarily the applicant's representative today. Okay. But I'm speaking for uh, Mr. Butler. Um, to the council members of the Plum, we are here to respectfully request that you support the Area Planning Commission's denial of the appeal and sustain the approval of our variance as published on December 7th, 2010, under ZA 2009-2396-ZV1A, as well as the approval of ZA 2009-2396-ZV by Chief Zoning Administrator <coughs> Lynn Wyatt's decision issued August 20th, 2010. We do not feel she erred egregiously, nor did the Area Planning Commission in their continued of approval of the zone variance 1217-5B for the continued use and maintenance of the zone and adult entertainment business in the MR1 zone and a variance from LAMC code section 1270C to permit the continued use and maintenance of an adult entertainment business within 500 feet of a residentially zoned property. 
The zone has been in business in actuality for 19 years at this subject site. In fact, the applicant operator has maintained the facility in good standing with no record of violations or problems with the police department. Uh, the morning that the police department did come, they came in about 11 o'clock in the morning. The cleaning crew comes in the afternoon as the zone opens in the evening, and that was the only issue was waste receptacles, and that was taken care of in the afternoon. So I did want to point that out as um, Zoning Administrator Wyatt discussed. Um, this use would be by right if outside the 500 foot radius. In fact, there are no residential dwelling units within 500 feet. As uh, Zoning Administrator Wyatt indicated, it is a parking lot for Shakey's and a Rite Aid drugstore that is zoned residential, and the parking lot has been sustained there for 15 years, um, and the businesses are continuing to operate there. A change of use from manufacturing to nightclub was issued on 12-194 by uh, the City of Los Angeles Building and Safety. May I ask you to conclude, please? Sure, absolutely. I want to state that Ms. Wyatt um, accurately uh, justified the uh, variance findings. We have a CFO. This business has been in operation for 19 years. I think it serves a very important purpose in the community. We have letters of support for all the other adjacent property owners in the immediate vicinity in the file. And we feel that it would be unfair to ask him to relocate or move when he's been a viable business and an appropriate neighbor for so many years. Thank you very much. One question. Sure. How many jobs are attributed to this facility? Thirteen. Thirteen jobs, okay. Thank and you. And they are long term. And once again, I did want to reiterate that the subject site has a Department of Building and Safety CFO for the encounter, and it's in the file. So they've been issued that, and that was issued quite some time ago. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you. Ms. Weitzer? Renee Weitzer? Tom Labonja's office. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, we are supporting the variance on this. Uh, we actually granted this variance in 94. I was there with a different council person. And we believe this business has been a good business at the right location. I personally spoke to Captain Gramala of Hollywood and specifically asked her if she had any issues with this business, and she indicated no. So we feel very comfortable that this is the appropriate location. We've seen no problems. I've driven by. It's clean on the outside. And we've had really no phone calls at all during this entire time since 94 with any criticism regarding this business. Okay. So we oppose the appeal. Oppose the appeal. Short and sweet. <laughs> We would not want thank to deny much. the appeal. Okay, thank you. Any questions from my colleague? Uh, and the speakers, all right. So that concludes the public hearing. And uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you. All right, so we'll move to uh, support the council office. And uh, given the questions we raised, the city attorney and the staff, uh, in light of uh, the appellant's issues and We've been given some answers that I think reaffirms the position of the staff, and uh, I would move that we support denial of the appeal. I'll be a second. I'll be an action of this committee. Uh, so, so you deny the appeal and adopt the findings of the zoning administrator. Yes, okay. exactly. Um, okay, now this is a little awkward. But we moved, uh, and Madam Attorney, I just want the mechanics on this. On item three, we moved on consent. So I've been notified that the um, council office actually, of that district, actually has concerns. And they want to continue the item. Mechanically, what, how would I approach that since they want us to continue it? Terry Kaufman, Messia City Attorney's Office. Um, the committee has the ability to reconsider uh, an item um, at the meeting where the action was taken or at the next regularly scheduled meeting. Um, you have to do it by motion. Um, there are only two of you, but the, um, the um, person making the motion has to be on the prevailing side. So either one of you can do it, and then you can so you'd move to reconsider, and so then, and then, okay, and then when you take it up, you can then make a motion to continue it. So it's been reconsidered. It's on the table now, and I would move to uh, continue for one week. Second. That'll be the action of this committee. 
So that's been uh, continued uh, on request of the council office of that district. And I believe that covers all the items, doesn't it, Robert? Uh, yes, sir. Anybody here for public comment? Seeing none, this committee is over. Good job, Tom.